Hello again everyone, Juan Carlos Peña here with our second short video of the series. This time we'll be focusing on the basic elements of the left hand technique. You might remember from our previous video how important it is to hold the bass in a proper manner. We rest the edge of the bass just on the inside of our hip bone. This gives us an angle where it's not only comfortable to play on all four strings but also allows us to keep a nice, relaxed and natural position with our left hand. We want our hand to form a straight line with our forearm to avoid any straining. Now, let's talk about the height of the base. How far should we take our end pin out? This is a question that I generally address with my students the first time that we work together. We don't want our instruments to be too tall. Let's pretend that my base is much taller right now. This might make it easier for the right hand, but the left hand would be so high that it would be really uncomfortable to play in the lower positions for too long. Blood circulation becomes rather hard and we wouldn't have a good natural angle in our wrist. On the other hand, if the base is too low, it would force us to hunch forward in order to reach a good contact point with the ball, as well as to play in the higher positions. That would definitely not be good for our backs. So I want to set my base to a height where my left hand is level more or less with my left cheek when playing in the first position. That would not only allow me to be comfortable with my left hand, but it would also let me set my bow in a good spot between the fingerboard and the bridge while maintaining my upper body in good posture. Notice the angle in which I hold my instrument. I want the neck of the bass to come towards me so that I can pretty much hug it. One issue when trying to play with a bass that is too vertical and the neck too far is that you end up in a position where you have to bend your wrist in a way that could be detrimental to the health of your muscles and tendons and at the same time would restrict the ease of movement. This doesn't seem too natural, does it? Compare this to this. Now, remember the orange test we did with our bow hand on our first video? Guess what? The same principle applies to your left hand too. See, this is the exact shape I want to have when I place my hand on the fingerboard. I want to align my thumb behind the fingerboard with my second finger. And keep my first finger clear from the fingerboard. Always make sure that your left hand, left hand is in the shape of a letter C. Now, let's talk about shifting. When we press down the strings, we definitely want a firm grip, but we don't want to put more pressure than we need to. Otherwise, we end up squeezing and tensing so much that it will make our hands tired and shifting really difficult. The thumb should be supporting our position, but be free enough to move up and down the neck as we shift back and forth. I like to imagine there's a tiny skateboard at the tip of my thumb that lets me easily glide up and down. Now, your thumb must also be flexible enough for your hand to slightly rotate depending on what string you're on. On the G string, on the E string. Now, let's play an F major scale in two octaves. Remember the B flat in the key signature. We're going to start in half position and after the B flat on the G string we will move to third position for C and D and to fifth position for E and F. Now, as I mentioned before, we want to make sure that we keep a nice round shape in our hand and fingers, but we also need to review the spacing between our fingers. Of course, we only use fingers 1, 2 and 4 in the regular positions and we don't normally start using 3 until we reach the octave and the thumb positions. 
we will be addressing the tone position at some other time. In the regular positions, it's easy for our second finger notes to be on the flat side if we're not careful, even if our 1 to 4 is perfectly in tune. This is something that is often overlooked, even by advanced students. We need to remind ourselves to space out more our second finger, so that the distance between 1 and 2 is the same as 2 and 4. We don't, have, we don't want to have small, big, we want the same distance in both. Let's also make sure that we keep those fingers really close to the strings at all times. If we're playing with the first finger, let's make sure that we're keeping the others very close to the string. And if we're playing with the fourth, the others stay on the string. Otherwise, it's really hard to play fast passages in a clean manner. We should not use vibrato when playing scales and arpeggios. When we vibrate, we hide intonation imperfections. Vibrato bends the pitch up and down. Now, here's our F major scale. from this angle and at a faster speed. Try the arpeggio with this fingering. This will help you develop your left hand technique. On our next video, we will look at hook dotted rhythms and ball retakes as we work on The Happy Farmer by Schumann. Again, take good care of yourselves and thanks for watching.